Hi, this is continuation for Power Electronics Lectures, and today we are going to continue talking about transistors. In the previous video, we have uh, spoken about uh, VGT transistors and what are the differences between um, uh, the uh, normal transistors and the power transistors, and then we gone through some more details. And today we are going to discuss the MOSFET transistors, and especially the power uh, MOSFET transistors. So, as we know from electronics fundamentals, that the MOSFET in general, they are voltage controlled devices. We don't need to push current into the gate to make it on, like the BGT transistors. So we have three terminals for the MOSFET, which is the gate and the drain, and the source, and we have two types which are N channel and P channel MOSFET. And from the background, I think we know that the MOSFET is available as a, a, a depletion type or enhancement type. But the most popular one and common now is the enhancement type, so that's why I'm going to focus on enhancement type MOSFETs. So the uh, relation between the VGS, which is the voltage between the gate and source and the current look like this okay we have this curve which is describing the voltage i'm applying across the gate and source okay and the relation with the current going through that mosfet between drain and source so it's different from the bgt transistor where i need to push current to make current between collector and emitter we have here to apply some voltage between gate and source okay to make current uh, passing through uh, the transistor from the drain to the source. And there is a very important point, which is the voltage I'm applying is between the gate and the source, not the gate and the ground, because we sometimes have some circuits, the ground is far away from the source, and maybe you have your load or another uh, component between the source and between the ground. So when you apply your voltage, you have to make sure that you are applying between the gate and the source and the voltage between the gate and the source has some threshold and that threshold is mentioned in the data sheet and it's, uh, it depends on the structure and the type of the MOSFET and the power and current ratings. So we have in this example the threshold is about 2.2 voltage or 2.5 voltage and after that now uh, raising the uh, VGS the current go more and more and more and more. The relation between the VGS and the current is determined by the uh, this slope, which is the uh, RDS on reciprocal. So the relation between that current and that voltage is determined by the RDS on, which is also mentioned in the data sheet. So MOSFET can be easily modeled as a resistance RDS on between the drain and the source, so it's capable of bidirectional current flow, and this is very important point. So the MOSFET, by this way, okay, it can pass the current from the drain to the source and from the source to the drain. It's different from the, the BGT, where we have just from the collector to emitter, if it's NP and transistor, it doesn't uh, allow the current to flow from the emitter to the collector. And this is good feature for the MOSFET in some circuits like inverters. So now we have N channel and P channel, but which one is more popular in our circuits is the N channel. And the reason behind it is, is it cheaper uh, compared with the P channel? with the same ratings, and also it has very low uh, RDS on resistance uh, during the on time compared with the P-channel. P-channel sometimes has uh, three times or four times RDS on if we compare it with the N-channel. So that's why they don't prefer to use P-channel in the circuits. It has one or two uh, advantage when you drive it in high side, which we will discuss later, but uh, the N channel is more popular to use. And if we look at the structure of the MOSFET, again, we have a little bit different structure like the uh, diodes and transistors. They have uh, different regions with different tubing uh, percentage here. So we have here N positive and then P and then N negative and then N positive. And we have here the source, okay, and the gate. And here we have the drain, okay? But this region here, which is SiO2, it's like a direct click region, like insulator. That's why we don't have 
uh, an electric contact between the gate and the other uh, uh, PN junction inside the MOSFET. And if you look deeply into this structure, you have N, P, and N. You have also P and N. What does it mean? It means that we have inside the MOSFET, we have other structures for other components like VGT transistor and like uh, diodes. So that's why it, this structure has inherently and has parasitic components. And one of the main parasitic components is the diode. We have, look at the, this, these junctions. We have P and N negative and N positive. What does this remind you? I think this is the same structure as the power diode, okay? So we have inside the MOSFET parasitic diode, and that diode is, uh, is, is reverse diode. So we have the symbol sometimes is like this. So we have this body diode is drawn from the source to the drain, like that, okay? So that one is not intentionally made, but it is a parasitic one. We have also another structure here as well, which is NPN. What is NPN? It's a transistor. But that transistor has been cancelled when they short this PN junction by a metal. Okay, so that one here is shorted and they cancel the uh, NPN transistor. And the one that is kept is the uh, PN junction here, which is uh, a power diode. And this picture here shows the terminals of uh, an example a MOSFET. We have a gate, drain, and source, and we have that metal, which is the body one, is drain terminal as well. And we have a very important question, which is, is there any problem with this parasitic diode inside the MOSFET? The main problem is it has very long reverse recovery time. That means if we have a circuit that we need to switch off the MOSFET, that diode here try to pass the current for a short time, which is the reverse recovery time uh, through the MOSFET, through the data inside the MOSFET, and that sometimes makes some problem for some structures. So that's why we will study these maybe in, in later circuits, but keep in mind that this has a, a long reverse recovery time, and, and sometimes to uh, deal with this diode, they have to provide another diode externally with lower voltage and higher speed just to make a replacement of that diode. And now, as before, we have to discuss the uh, switching power MOSFETs. And because of the structure of the MOSFET and there are some insulations and some dielectric, we make also parasitic capacitors. So, for example, we have a capac small capacitance between the drain and the gate, and between the gate and the source and also between the drain and the source, okay? And when we switch on and off this MOSFET here, we have to just put in mind that these uh, voltages and these currents pushed into the MOSFET, they have to charge these capacitance during the switching time, okay? And that makes sometimes problems to the MOSFET and how we drive it, and that's why we have to select some drivers uh, carefully to satisfy the MOSFETs and the capacitance uh, appearing at the terminals of these MOSFETs. And now, for example, we have here uh, a switching diagram. We have off time, and then we applied some voltage here at the gate. And that voltage, we uh, mentioned before that there is oscillation here, and there is no current will go to the gate. Yes, there is no current will go to the structure there, but because of the capacitance, there is current will go through the parasitic capacitance appearing between the terminals. And uh, practically, we have to see some current going through there just to charge these capacitors, because without charging these capacitors, we are not going to pass the V threshold and turn on our MOSFET. So, for example, now we're applying here uh, 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 a pulse, okay? And we have the uh, turn on edge as it's shown here. What happens when we giving a turn on edge? There's current will go to start charging this MOSFET, which is the between the gate and the source. And it's like charging any capacitor. The voltage will grow smoothly, okay? Until we pass the something called V threshold. 
and that V threshold will it's the value that will the current will start passing between the uh, drain and source. So when I reach this point now, the drain will open a little bit and the current will start flowing between the drain and the source. And at that time, the voltage between and the source will now start to drop, okay? So now at that threshold exactly, we have a drop in voltage between the drain and the source and also flow of current. So what happens later? Because the drain now start to uh, to to drop the voltage between between it and between the source. So, for example, we have hundred volt between the drain and source in the off time, but we, in the on time process now, the voltages start to drop, 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 drop between the uh, the drain and the source, as as we see here. That means this terminal of that capacitor now is going is going is going to be at this point at that point eventually so what happened next actually we can simulate and model what's happening in this process here by paralleling these capacitors that means instead of charging one capacitor uh, during the on time we uh, will see another capacitor is included okay and that capacitor is not small is also big and that will make the charging uh, like like stable here, okay? And there is no voltage will go grow, okay? And that um, a flat edge is called the plateau, okay? And that's called because of the Miller capacitance and Miller effect, okay? So that capacitor here will look like big capacitor during this transition, and the uh, current needed to charge one capacitor now we have to charge two capacitors now okay so that's why now we uh, will see a turn on okay edge and then a flat edge and then after start discharging this capacitor from the previous charge and then recharge it with a new charge from the gate so it spends some time and then we'll charge it again to the value that we need okay so the process of it, of switching on the mosfet and the gate of the mosfet has a three parts which is the uh, v threshold and then the plateau and this edge now is called the gate plateau voltage and then completing the uh, the charging process or turning on the mosfet and this is the process for the for switching on the MOSFET and when we look at the charges we spending and we have to push into the gate to charge the uh, first capacitance and the second capacitance also it has this uh, waveform so this is the charge axis and this is the VGS axis so the voltage will grow if I pushed more charges and this is known in the capacitance okay so we have zero charge here okay there is nothing pushed but once you turn on, you start pushing some charges, with, which is uh, relevant to the current you, you are pushing. And this charge now is just responsible to be charging this capacitor. And later on, because the turning on make that drain go and drop, drop to the source point here. So we have to uh, charge also that capacitance and that also need some time so that's why we have the flat plateau uh, edge here which is miller plateau and then we complete the charge so that charge is called the uh, qgs charge okay and this charge is responsible to complete the charging process but with the gd uh, uh, charge okay capacitance here okay so this is how it look like when we push some charges and some currents, okay? And that one is the com completion of the charging process. Now, where we find these capacitance value and where we find these charge values, all of them are in the data sheet. But if we got the QGS and the QGD, this is not enough to, to charge the, uh, the whole capacitance because we have this part. To include this part, they they have defined for us in the data sheet something called the uh, QG, okay? So the QG is the total charge you have to push to charge the first capacitance and also the second capacitance and push it more 
to arrive the uh, the turn on voltage okay so this is the total capacitance that we care about in our design and this waveform just show to us uh, the current and and voltage waveform with the VGS waveform as well so during the charging here this is the first time we 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 apply some pulses um, uh, uh, between the gate and the source and there is the threshold here where the current start passing flowing and also the uh, voltage between the drain and source start dropping okay at that point we have uh, another capacitance included uh, within the process the charging time and this is the plateau and we have here the current is already uh, gone to the maximum and the voltage needs more time to go to the lowest point here until we finish the plateau time here and then the uh, remaining of the process time now will start to grow and grow and grow until we finish the turning on the MOSFET and again I think I mentioned that these capacitors are mentioned in the data sheet but they are not mentioned as CGS and CGD and CDS no they are mentioned in different way which is CISS which is the input capacitance COSS which is the output output capacitance and CRSS which is the reverse transfer capacitance between the, ga the gate and the drain okay the gate and the drain this one and this is an example of how the data sheet mentioned these so all these capacitors here and also it mentions the uh, the QG and also QGS and the QGD QGS and the QGD uh, is not enough to determine the total charge I need to turn on completely the MOSFETs that's why they have included QG and for example for this MOSFET we have it as 63 nano coulomb okay so we have here a question which is important question look at these capacitors here and mainly the CISS the input capacitance I want to charge to turn in my MOSFET I think here it mentions 1300 picofarad it's very very tiny so why we have concerns about the charging this tiny capacitors the concern because if we are looking at a uh, turning on this mosfet in very short time like 100 nanosecond so look at this example now we have for example a uh, uh, capacitance between a uh, gate and the drain so this one okay we will forget this one just to make example simple okay so this one now is about 500 picofarad for example and we have the turn on time is 100 nanosecond so i want to go through all the process that i showed you within just 100 nanosecond how i achieve that is it simple or no so because the uh, the time is very short even if the capacitance is very small i need huge current to push during this short time to turn on or to charge this capacitance okay and for example if we are looking at this capacitor here okay and we have these values as 400 and i want to drive my mosfet by 20 volt so now i am applying here 20 volt okay and that started charging that capacitor and the voltage now dropped between the uh, the drain and the source making this point close now closer 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 to zero it was 400 at this terminal okay and finally this terminal will be zero and this terminal should be 20 so what is the difference in this process that point was 400 and then it will be zero so i have to discharge the 400 and then charge it in the reverse polarity 20 volts here okay coming from the gate so look at this complicated process here so what is the difference between the uh, the, the first uh, position where we have 400 here and then the final decision where we have a 20 volt there and zero there okay so the difference in this process where we are turning on our MOSFET the change in the gate to drain voltage is 420 why 420 because we have to finish this 400 first to make it zero and then we charge it from that terminal 20 so we have to deplete the 400 and push another to have uh, 20 volts so now this is the change in voltage and this is the change in current within the 100 nanosecond so the the current i need to make this change 
equals the capacitance multiplied by the uh, difference in voltage divided by difference in current and in time. And that equals 500 picofarad. And the difference in voltage is 420 within within time of 100 nanoseconds. And that equals 2.1 ampere. So I have to push in 100 nanoseconds 2.1 ampere. Is it easy? It's not very easy, okay? That's why we have to use gate drivers to do this, okay? We can't uh, drive this MOSFET by applying 0505 from microcontroller, from Arduino, from any microcontroller, STM microcontrollers, because it's not uh, capable of pushing that current uh, during this time. This is first reason. Second reason, because it doesn't have the voltage sometime, because some MOSFET, they need to tr uh, trigger on maybe at uh, 15 volt. And the microcontrollers, they don't have that voltage. So that's why we have to use the gate drivers. And if we use that charge information from the data sheet, and for example, we have a QG here, equals 100 nanocoulomb. So we didn't use the capacitance, we used the QG. And that QG, I have to ch to, to uh, deliver this charge to the MOSFET, okay, within 100 nanoseconds. And how I also calculate the current, the current equals the charge over time. And we have 100 nanocoulomb divided by 100 nanosecond, and that equals 1 ampere. So I have to push 1 ampere. Again, our microcontrollers can't do that easily. And that's why we have to use gate driver. I will show you now just uh, one example of without and with the gate driver. What's the situation and how the switching look like? This is the VDS waveform, the voltage between the drain and source, and this is the uh, voltage between gate and source. The voltage between gate and source is developing like this. This is the first part during uh, charging the uh, capacitance between the, the gate and source, and this is the plateau, and then complete the charging process. And that takes time. That means it it, it dissipates more power during turning on. That means increasing the switching losses, okay? But if we use the driver and good design driver, I think we can shorten this period to very small period and also make the uh, charging process faster, making the switching losses lower. So this is with a gate driver and how it look like. And the final word about uh, MOSFETs, I think we have other switches like IGBTs and I will not talk about IGBTs because they are very close to the properties of uh, driving a MOSFET and also it has some terminals here shared with the bipolar transistors. So that's why talking about IGBT will not be very different if we just know the information about MOSFETs and uh, bipolar trans uh, transistors. So the IGBT look like this. It has collector and emitter, and they took the input side here from the MOSFET, which is the gate, because we don't need to push current. We have just to apply some voltage, and it's easier to drive than the bipolar uh, transistors. So as a comparison, very quick comparison, we have the speed for the bipolar transistors is slow, okay, for power applications. And for the MOSFET, it's fast. And for the IGBT, it's slower than the MOSFET, but faster than the bipolar transistors. For the drive power, we have to drive it very highly because, as we mentioned in some examples before, that we have to push high current sometime, and it has some complication. But this one is 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 low compared with that one, and this one is low because we have gate, okay, uh, and that gate doesn't need a constant and the steady current to be pushed toward the uh, the gate. We just want to push high current just to charge the capacitors and that's it, okay? For the large cap current capability, it's very excellent. So that's why we have between the emitter and collector, we can apply very high voltage. But for the MOSFETs, for the silicon MOSFETs, yeah, we don't have that high capability. But for the silicon carbide MOSFETs, we have. We have up to... 1,200 and uh, 1,700 as well, and maybe will be bigger, bigger in the future as well. So, silicon MOSFETs they are not capable of blocking higher voltage and higher current, but for silicon carbide MOSFET, yes, it does. Okay, and for the IGBT, yes, it's it has high 
uh, voltage and current uh, properties and very excellent capability. So now, according to uh, what I uh, see in the application of and, and circuits of power electrons, they mainly use MOSFETs now. And by providing the, uh, the new material, silicon carbide MOSFETs and GAN MOSFETs, they, uh, they make the um, usage of MOSFETs more popular and maybe visible more uh, if we compare it with the IGBTs and bipolar transistors. So main focus, if you want, just look at the resources, talk, uh, talking about MOSFETs more, and make yourself knowledgeable about what is the trends and what is coming for as a new technology uh, to use it in your applications and to make the reduction of uh, switching losses, conduction losses, worth for your new applications. That's it for this part of the lecture, and see you in the coming lecture. Thank you very much.